There's so much to love about Transformers as a whole, but most of us can agree that one of the best parts of this brand is the sheer scale. Massive, larger-than-life robots in disguise. I mean, that'll never not be awesome. So what happens when one company completely pivots and gives us the smallest Transformers toys in the world? Does that defeat the purpose? And more importantly, are they any good? This little nugget happens to be the smallest of the bunch. His name is Cosmos. Uh, well, except it's not, because don't forget, these are made by a third-party company, so his technical name is Space Disc. Nobody knows why. As shocking as it may be, he transforms into a green UFO. And right out the gate, he is really freaking awesome. I have a very specific obsession with miniature transformers. When I started collecting at seven years old, the only thing I could even hope to afford were those little $4 Legion class figures, or the real title that my brother and I gave them before we could read the box, apparently, Squeaks. So color me interested when about four years ago, a company named Dr. Wu started making fully transformable figures that were somehow even smaller than the Squeaks were. It's crazy to me just how much they absolutely nailed the look of the original character in some ways better than any version 10 times his size ever has. And like I said, he is the shortest of this entire line, but he is also a well-set boy. Bit of a goober gobbler, some might say a, a chunky dunker, or, you know, a fork porker. A bit of a ham planet. A substantially grounded person of gravitational relevance. Maybe a pantry p Um... <clears throat> Despite that, it's pretty insane that he has ankle tilts and a knee bend. And just for comparison, they happen to bend further than Gamer Edition Megatrons does. But then again, so does a plastic spoon. Ah! We're off to a fantastic start because Space Disc is perfect. And even better, these micro midgets are sold in two packs, meaning that Cosmos was bundled with a much leaner Decepticon named Ramjet. <laughs> This is one out of three Seekers that I have in this line. The main difference being that Ramjet is one of the Coneheads, which kind of sounds like a slur of some kind. Like, he definitely didn't come up with that term for himself. But Starscream probably did, and he's maybe the best-looking figure out of all these guys in robot mode. All the Seekers specifically are unusually impressive. They look the least miniature out of the group because of their proportions and details and paintwork. They also have a very decently intricate transformation. It's cute that their arm blasters are removable at this size. Probably unnecessary, but I appreciate the attention to details. It works too, because the jet modes are as good-looking as I've ever seen. My only issue is that they don't sit upright because there's no landing gear or front stand of any sort. There's also no peg holes to prop them up on a flight stand, so you'll have to get creative if you want to pose them in the air. There's kind of a tying theme in these two packs where one figure tends to be small and the other is even smaller. And a lot of the smaller ones are members of the G1 Minibots team. Powerglide isn't necessarily my favorite out of them, but I still adore him because he has a face mask. And everybody, say it together with me. If you want to make any Transformer instantly 10 times cooler, just give him a face mask. Hasbro, I'm free for consultation all week. Like most of the others, this figure relies heavily on using ball joints. And while I'm totally cool that they use them at this scale, a lot of them end up being loose. And tightening them with floor polish like I normally would will turn them into just a stiff saltine cracker. All's forgiven though, because by far the best part of Power Glide is knowing that in the real world, every person on the ground would only ever see one side of this mode. <laughs> We'll call it my official headcanon that now he just tested. Close his eyes and hope nobody notices whenever he flies over groups of people. I don't know. <laughs> just hanging around. But at least he tried, right? Because you know who didn't? Galvatron. If you didn't know, Galvatron transforms into this useless little number, which is still somehow less worthless of an alternate mode than this. And you know what? That's all I'm going to say about that, because I'd like to live a healthy and happy 60 more years. This miniature menace is probably one of my least favorites out of the entire group. I don't know. There's just not really a lot going on here, but I still have a soft spot for him since it was part of the first two pack I ever got of these years ago for the same reason that I know a lot of people did. See, Dr. Wu was genius enough to create and release this just in time for the production of the biggest Transformers toy ever created, Hasla. Unicron. Galvatron is an essential companion piece to Unicron because of the 1986 animated movie, and this is probably the closest thing we'll ever get to a transformable figure in scale with that beast. It was such a big-brained move from this company to start off their first release. Their other big-brained move was packing him with Sound Blaster. Nope, not Soundwave. Sound Blaster is a black and kind of orange repaint of Soundwave, which is cool for sure, but who at, like, where's Soundwave, you know? Where is Soundwave? Uh, on an unrelated note, guess who else they released just a few months later? <laughs> These two just look downright awesome. Some of the best posability out of the entire line with everything I could ever ask for from a tiny Transformer. They clearly knocked it out of the park with these guys. They transform into their classic G1 micro cassette players. Boy, do I love me a good transforming rectangle. This is always a win in my book. Also, I am required by Transformers Law to mention that his chest does not, in fact, open up for little cassette minions. Is that completely justifiable here? Absolutely. But should it also be legally ruled as a war crime worthy of the death sentence? Sentence. 
Yeah. Either way, they're both just simply good figures. A lot like this little goober, Sea Spray. And like his fellow calorie consumer, he's one of my top favorites in the entire group. I'm an absolute sucker for Sea Spray's design. Face mask? Check. Big clopping feet? Done. And aside from his head not being able to turn, I don't really see much to improve about him. He may not be as horizontally extended as Cosmos, but I don't know. I'm sure he'd hold his own during a good wrestle. Am I right? <laughs> oh... The original stout design of these mini bots translates so well to this tiny figure format since they get to behave engineering wise like small figures without compromising the accurate look by much. It's pretty bizarre to say this, but these two are probably my favorite versions of the characters. But ladies and gentlemen, I am sad to say that there is one mini bot that does not live up to the hype. But first, I'd like to really quick thank Odin Lake. They were awesome enough to send me their aptly named Butterfly 753 just in time to carry me through the last five months of tirelessly working on my last massive video. I'd also recommend that you check out the link in the description to shop around for this chair or any other great products by Odin Lake. My back would be probably just a pretzel if I didn't have this chair to support me during the last few months of work on this channel. I love this thing so much. It's so comfortable. Go check it out. I couldn't tell you why I've always had such an affinity towards Beachcomber, but I have, and he was one of the figures that I was looking forward to the most out of all of these. That being said, his head doesn't turn, his waist doesn't swivel, and his ankles don't tilt. All three, absent together, makes a figure that literally can't do anything besides an A-stance pose. But luckily, there's a very good reason, since his transformation justifies all of that given how complicated and involved it is. Oh, sorry. I think I mispronounced that. What I meant to say was, given how badly they completely forgot to engineer this figure's entire transformation. My bad, I'd get those words mixed up a lot. This just doesn't look like a vehicle. I cannot impulsively see this as anything besides a little robot person laying on his stomach with his legs curled up. Nothing clicks in, extends, or hides. And I'm really only talking about this because I've noticed that most third-party companies really do listen to feedback and care about specific improvements. Each two-pack of these averages between $27 to $32, and I think comparatively, it's a perfectly fair price for the quality of what you get here, but it also means that you are still paying at least $14 for each of these, and this figure just isn't acceptable for that money. So let's finally get to the one that caught so many people's attention. This is the one and only Optimus Prime. He's a little different than the other guys I've talked about, because he goes for the same price, but instead of packing in a second figure, they gave him his iconic trailer. And yes, we all had the same collective reaction when we first laid eyes on this. It's enough to make a grown man cry. This truck mode is slick, and it wasn't accidental because Optimus has two tricks up his transformation that I'm really excited to talk about. But first, a question that I'm once again legally required to answer, no. Sadly, none of the other Dr. Wu figures fit in this trailer. But there is one vehicle that does fit, and it's Roller. And yeah, I feel pretty stupid for buying and shipping these all the way from China, but you don't really have much of a choice since his trailer has no kickstand to stay propped up on, and Roller is really the only option you have to keep the trailer horizontal without Prime's truck bed under it. And like I said, I did get these shipped all the way from China, but just because Shozi store is one of the only online transformer sellers from China that I trust. They're always the first and the cheapest to get these new Dr. Wu figures in stock, so the link to their store is in the description. Now for the transformation, the first clever trick that he pulls off are these little leg panels that fold out and click into the cab to make the whole thing look so much more streamlined. And I'm sorry, if this doesn't impress you, I don't think you understand just how small this figure is. The second engineering trick is my personal favorite part. His front wheels fold up into his waist to create his robot torso. Like he's a freaking masterpiece figure or something. This genuinely blows my mind for this scale because the fact that they they didn't just slap all that on the back of his arms gives me probably an unhealthy amount of joy. But real quick, why don't we talk about the thing that immediately sucks all the joy out of my body. Okay, I've never actually heard this talked about before, so hopefully I'm not abysmally alone on this, but I have always despised joints on any Transformer that have to extend by pulling them apart or pushing them together. There's probably nothing I hate more than having to double grip two parts of a toy and use uh, my pure, raw, masculine strength to rip them apart. It's just the worst. Also, 9-11. Um, yeah, that was pretty bad. That was, it was probably worse. Yeah, that was, it was worse. Yeah. His robot mode is solid, and it looks really good. I love how bright the colors are. Unlike the Seekers, he's definitely got that slightly chubby aesthetic to him, but especially if you're just getting him on his own as an Optimus Prime lover, there's nothing to dislike about this robot mode. This design is just the gift that keeps on giving, because well over a year after getting that, they gave us Ultra Magnus. This beefcake was also sold separately, but his trailer combines with the cab to create the robot mode. That right there is a massive immediate win in my book since I'm getting a little tired of the dormant plastic trailers taking over my home. I've always been so fascinated with his design since the idea that this robot could turn into that just it blew my mind since I was a kid. To be fair, I still can't fully grasp how it works since I'm apparently destined to never get a copy of the Commander class version. So, you know, this little guy is helping me heal. And while I'm trying to make myself feel better, this handsome little hunker has something that the $90 Commander doesn't. A separate core 
robot mode. So now we get this incredible little ghost of Optimus Prime, a thicked up boss mode, and one of the coolest miniature vehicles I've ever seen all in one figure. If you couldn't tell, he's by far the biggest out of this entire line, and it's not even close. Not to mention that he's got tons of little accessories to help define his iconic look, and I say this with the strongest of pride. Every single one of his modes is a home run. The souped up mode is somehow virtually backpack and kibble free. His truck mode nails the very particular look of his iconic trailer. Oh, and the transformation to convert between them is nothing short of a little miniature engineering miracle. This guy is the golden standard for tiny Transformers toys. But to be honest, so are a lot of these. In a world of companies that aim to make figures bigger every year, I'm just so happy that these things even exist in the first place. So many fans struggle with having available living space to keep a collection, and even more can't afford anything that's on the market. These little guys give the brand new purpose for a hobby that hopefully makes us happier. And that should always be the reason to join or stay in any community during our chaotic and demanding lives, right? To make us happier. And these guys, they make me happier. All right, later guys.